Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. I am so glad to be doing this video. Um, I was uh, uh, watching a lot of what was going on last week in the regards to the release of the Ripperverse, and I'm hugely excited about it. Uh, I'm hugely inspired by it. That's what inspired me to kind of get back to the motivation I used to have. Anyway, Razor Fist said in one of his videos that in order to build this this thing, this cultural movement, this parallel economy thing, or just normal economy, whatever you want to call it, you know, we need people out there creating. We need people out there, you know, writing their own books, doing their own music, uh, making their own movies, all this stuff. And he goes, but here's the thing. If you're not inclined to be doing like that stuff, like on the creative side, be the person that's covering it. Be like, you know, the YouTube channel that's blowing it up. Be, be uh, uh, the, the website, you know, that, that covers this stuff, writing the articles about it or, or doing what you can do in that space. And so that's why I am doing this video because I just, let's get it. Hashtag we will win. So let's go and let's break down the ISOM number one trailer on that Eric July released. Let's get into it. Let's see where this is going to go. Please forgive my uh, the screen that's about to pop up. It's really old and it needs updated and I'm pretty sure the coding for it is off. But anyway, let's get into ISOM number one trailer. <laughs> All right, so when I first watched this, I thought that that intro was a little dramatic compared to the shirt that Eric was wearing. I'm not giving him crap. I just like, I'm so used to seeing Eric wear different shirts and I was just like, okay, that, you know, but I, I, I'm not giving him crap. I just, you know, artistically speaking, I was like, oh, dramatic. And I was like, well, because like something like dramatic like that, you know, aviators, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what I think that music would go to, but I just wanted to throw that out there. It's just, it was just funny to me. It's, I'm not giving him crap. This guy's killing it right now, but let me, I'm going to have fun with this. Okay. Have fun with me or yell at me in the comments. I don't know. Do that. Like the video. If you guys, you know, dig what I'm attempting to do here. I like that. I, I like that's cool. I really, I really dig that. Boy, that is really, really loud on my end. Let's lower that volume a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, shot of some of the characters there. So, the Ripperverse logo. Uh, let's see if I can. Let's let's go back. Let's go back. This, the uh, nope nope. Come on, go back. There we go. The Ripperverse logo. I think that that's just great. You know the lightning bolts. Um, I like that. We're going with the Ripperverse. It's yeah. I dig that. So, all right, cool. So great. Uh, I just I don't know. I'm excited for this, and it's gold too. Like, you know. You know, all that glitters is gold, and right now, Ripa is gold. I saw issue number one is the first book released through Ripperverse Publishing, which makes it extremely significant. Though this is ISOM's self-titled book, it also serves as a launching pad for our entire universe. This 96-pager was written... Okay, so ISOM number one, he is going to be doing something incredibly hard in that he not only has to introduce you to ISOM, he also has to introduce you to the rest of his universe, the backstory of the universe, and other characters he will be writing comics on. 
that there's a lot to tackle there. I would imagine that he's probably been working on this since before he even announced the Ripperverse. That would be my guess here, right? So, um, and let's let's go back. Uh, let's let's look at some of uh, 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 this, right? I mean, just the the artwork alone, right? I mean, a lot of you know some some of the haters out there. Oh, it's bland. It's you know, no. This is this is the level of care and detail, and I like that the black lining is outlined in blue. I think that that's just so great. But this is this is the level of artwork that people think of when they think of really good comic books, not some of the trash tier stuff that like is coming out now. So there's there's that. Also, the music once it switches up aesthetically seems in my brain to fit more with like the shirt and the hat. Um maybe I'm just used to seeing Rippa in like his sleeveless shirts. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm I'm going to get off the shirt thing. It's that's stupid of me to talk about. I'm sorry. But no. This here, this is great. I love this. It just it looks fantastic. Um so all right, so we're dropping, we're dropping my some number one. All right, let's go. For our entire universe. This 96 pager was written by myself, Eric July. The pencil and ink work was done by the great Cliff Richards and the color work was done by Gabe El Taib. Two comic book veterans. This book is part one of the ill-advised arc and it follows Avery Silman who lives right outside of Flores Park, Texas, the place where he was born and raised. Now Avery is what is known as an except which is what common folk in this area call special people. I like that he is already defining, like, I mean, everybody thinks of the term mutants. We understand what that means when we hear that. Um, um, uh, and I like that he has put in the words, okay, what are we going to call the people with powers in this universe. He thought about that already and he calls them excepts. I think that's a really good concept. Um, I like that he's telling you already who the guy is and kind of what his backstory is. That's really going to help to 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 launch this thing off in a good way. Years ago, shortly after he got his abilities, Avery decided to become a hero of sorts and adopted the moniker Isom. But a certain event had him come to the realization that this life wasn't for him. So now he lives on his own ranch outside of the big city. One day, Avery gets a call from his sister, Altona. She wants him to visit his old buddy because a family friend that interned at her company, Projexus, has gone missing. That old friend is Darren Fontano, and apparently he has some connection to his family friend. All right, so... We're introducing a family connection. We're introducing a backstory to the character. So we're this isn't, and this is. I thought this was a really interesting take here. He's starting the the uh, Isom after he'd already been a hero, quit for a while. Now he's coming back. So we're not actually seeing the origin story of Isom. We're seeing something much later down the road. That's really interesting. That is something that I think could uh, hold on. Let me. Yeah, I'm a little hot right now. Let me turn down a little bit. That is something that could, depending on how he started his story and what the event was that made him stop. I almost hope that he doesn't talk about the event. Like I hope that he's like, man, this thing happened. I I hope he stays a little bit cryptic. But maybe, maybe I could be wrong though. I'm just like that would be cool, right? Just kind of that like, oh, I want to hear about this. I want to know about this a little more. That I would be, I would be super, super down if he would, if he would keep the event that made Isom not a hero anymore, uh, cryptic and a little bit more in the background. So, or uh, yeah, and then obviously you know the family connection. We're getting you know this Darren uh, Fontano. Um, love the artwork there. Um, just. Man, it's just really good. Really, really good. The, the saturation there is... I mean, that's just fantastic. Fontano has much changed since he was kicking it with Avery when they were, you know, we lads. Now he's a cold-blooded shot caller that isn't afraid to do what it takes to remain in his position as one of the most respected people in the city. This is a man that you do not want to... 
Okay, so that's actually, I love, and I love when stories will do this, is they will take two people who were friends at one point in time and put them on the opposite sides of the law from each other because as they grew up, they grew apart and they took separate routes in life. I think everybody can probably, and what's so great about that, that, because it's been done before, and to say that it hasn't been done before, um, but one, it can be done well, and two, it can be done poorly. I'm, I, I think Ripa, as much thought as he's put in, he's probably going to do it well. Um, but what's so good about that storytelling aspect is everybody has that thing where they're like, well, I grew up with this guy. I loved him or g- girl or whatever. And they were brother to me or sister to me when, when, when we were kids. And as we got older, we just, we grew apart, right? We chose different paths in life. And uh, sometimes it put us on opposite ends of an issue politics could be one of those things in like the real world not to inject like real world politics into this at all but that is something relatable that is a story element right there that bam people already know they already get let's return to traditional storytelling it's got nothing to do with um it's got nothing to do with the 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 modern day you know lefty politics it's just something that everybody can relate to so right there eric is already doing what he told you he was going to do that's such a great storytelling element is the friends who grew apart. I, I like that. That's it's simple. It's to the point. Uh, let's get back into it. Cross. What was supposed to be a simple meetup with an old friend turns into the longest day of Avery's life. He runs into other excepts such as Sanswan, Yaira, and the Alpha Court. And some of these altercations take a very violent. All right. So. Let me. Oh, oh, that went way too far back. Uh, th- this guy here, he's another except. Then we've got, um, oh, I wish I knew, remembered all my buttons. Yaira, um, which she's kind of got this Super Saiyan Blue thing going on. And then obviously we get into uh, other characters that he is uh, uh, talking about. Sorry, if you can hear the dogs in the background. I got doggos and one of them's loud. And the Alpha Core. I like this. I like... I like that we're showing other characters. Again, this is going to be really hard for him to do, to be able to launch Isom, tell you about the universe, make it Isom's story, but talk about these individuals and then try to do issues off of them. 97 pages is a lot of room to do that, though. And depending on how tight and concise the storytelling is, um, it could be really good, but it's got to be tight, right? Um, cause that's the one thing, like if it's, if, if the storytelling starts to get off in the weeds, I think that'll come through. I don't think Eric is going to get off in the weeds because it's one of the things that he can't stand in storytelling. So I like this here. And not only that, but like these excepts and he never necessarily said they were good or bad. He simply said that there was something that happened there. Right. And some of these altercations take a very violent turn considering his past with one of these characters. You can see why he tries to stay out of the city. Who is this family friend and what is their connection with Darren Fontano? How does this meeting between him and Avery turn out? And does he get the information that Altona needs? How does this impact the psyche of Avery who went from a hero to a now blue collar civilian? These are all questions that will be answered in ISOM issue number one, which you can now pre-order. So I like that, you know, you've got to have that thing that draws you back, right? That thing that pulls the main character back into the fray, that thing that says, uh, well, how do we get, because like, you got to think about it. It's like, well, what's the reason that the guy comes back? It's like, why did John Wick go out and do what John Wick did in the first movie. And a lot of people say, well, they killed his puppy. Well, yes, that, that is true. But the deeper point to that is it was a puppy that his wife, after her death, made sure would be delivered to him after her death so he would have something to love after she had died. Okay, so that puppy had a really a lot more of a deeper meaning, right? So this family friend, what's the connection there? What's the deeper meaning? Because it can't just be like a family friend because I got family friends and I'm not going out and like doing some dumb stuff and like trying to get mixed up in the fray for like just some normal friends. 
is it deeper or is it just like, man, we grew up with the, like, who knows? All questions that we should be asking. This is where we can like theory craft until the book comes out, right? Let's do that. Are people theory crafting yet? Like we should, let's, let's be as excited for this and talk about these characters as we can. Let's see what else we've got here. At Riververse.com. Yep, already done. Some other limited edition merchandise items I, that will give you some more insight on the characters, such as. All right, so the such as. I like that he's alluding that there's going to be another character who is mysterious that we probably hasn't been announced yet here. Hopefully will be announced in ISM number one. Who is he going to announce? Will it be a greater villain or a hero? That such as, or is it this, uh, um, uh, the, the, the guy with the, the, for the cards here that he's going to advertise here at the end. Um, uh, but yeah, this and this here, right? He's launching a universe. Earth, a place with such interesting beings. Like many other planets throughout the cosmos, their subjects have needless squabbles. But from those conflicts, I've discovered some creatures that could be of great use to our efforts. I'm not quite ready for the selection, but after many patient years, I feel it is time for more thorough di All right, so... That is the trailer for the Ripperverse for Isom number one. I think that so far he has a solid layout for motivations, solid layout for enemies. Again, simple way that the enemy became the enemy. They just grew up in different directions from each other. Um, a really good music video that I liked for that was the Flowbots uh, No Handlebars. That shows much the same thing. Um, easy. Easy to understand. Uh, they did the... Um, again, you've seen that storyline a lot. I'm interested in that. The family friend, uh, to get him back into the fray, so his sister calls him. So how is this all connected? Um, is it going to be a strong enough motive? Well, and so it depends. So there are two questions that I have right now. One, what's the event that got him out of being a superhero? And two, does the reason for him kind of going back into this um, outweigh the reason he got out? Or is it just going to be like, all right, sis, I'll help you this one time. But like, I just want to live. All right. But, but you're my sister. Like, cause that's a good reason too. Like my, you know, my sister calls and says, Hey, I really need help with this thing. Like I'm going to help my sister, like sisters, sister, sisters, sister-in-laws. Like anyway, um, all right. Who is he going to introduce next? Is it going to be a hero or a villain? And what's he going to talk about? Because the way that he left that off, there's a sequel to this trailer or there's a sequel. You get what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm excited for this. Let's start building this. Let's be that community. Let's, I, not good at drawing. I think I could probably write something okay. Maybe. I don't know. The music that I wrote didn't really blow up at any point. But I don't know. I think I could write something. But it's, I, eh, I practice. I need practice at that. Maybe in 14 to 75 years, I'll come up with something that's well written. Rip already did write something. What I can do is I can sit here in front of my nerd wall that my wife helped me put together with the stuff from our childhood, and I can talk to you guys about this amazing thing that's happening, and we can get excited about it. So let's get excited. Hashtag we will win. Please, if you guys like what I did here, what I'm doing here, or attempting to do, hit the like button down below. If you really like what I'm doing, Subscribe. If you really, really like what I'm doing, share it. All of those things help. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And thank you for Young Rippa for doing this because you're giving guys like myself something to be excited for and the ability to and motivation to continue our channels. And here's the thing. I want to I want to shout to the mountaintops right now about Young Rippa. So like 
could move in the direction for a while for young Rippa doing these videos to shout to the mountaintops about how awesome the guy is. So thank you guys so much for tuning into a drink with crazy and we'll see you all next time right here on a drink with crazy. I should not screw up the outro like that. That was bad. That was bad. Yep. Yep. That was bad. Thank you for watching a drink with crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.